Firstly, thank you all for coming today to the show. Uh, it's an immense privilege for us to perform in front of you. And I appreciate taking the time out on a busy Sunday for us. Uh, I won't bore you with uh, the talk. We're going to get started soon, but a few house rules. I appreciate if you can keep the noise to a minimum uh, in respect to other members in the audience and also to the performers on stage. I appreciate if you can put your phones on silent. And if there is minimal walkouts or walk-ins, that will be much appreciated. If you do need a comfort break, there is a toilet right here to the side. I think it's marked. Uh, there's a mirror and, and next to that there is toilets here. Of course, if you do want to go to the cafe, there is a toilet right uh, in the cafe as well. So. Uh, I think that's pretty much, and, and no eatables or drinks inside the hall, please. Uh, if you can finish it in the cafe, that'll be great. Okay, we'll get going. Um, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchetukha Bhagbhave A wish for all, a prayer for all, a subtle unity in intending everything that is good and joyous comes to all. And today, joy and happiness is what it is all about. Welcome to Sri Krishnar Pranamastu. Krishna, black, dark hue, all attractive the absolute truth. From the superficiality of the physical to the profoundness of the metaphysical, Krishna the name has meanings that are both understandable yet intriguing at the same time. Perhaps it is that broadness of what the name represents that has drawn us all into this empty space here today and filled it with the tunes and vibes, colors and movements that is Krishna. Krishna has a myriad connotation, an important deity of Hinduism, an avatar of Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Lord himself, a central character of the great Indian epic Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Purana and the most widely known scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Ask any child today who has seen Krishna through the magical prism of their innocent eyes and you will know that he is that child. He is that innocence. He is that effervescence of life carefree but is the bearer of absolute truth. 
today if it is that child that boy that prankster that we celebrate little krishna through little voices just the way krishna is cherished by every mother who caresses her own the baby in whose mouth every mother tries to visualize the universe and finds her own so it is only fitting that shri krishnarpanamastu came from these very innocent minds a chance conversation led to the innocuous discussion on why we could not have a krishna play just like we did nativity at school the seed was sown by two siblings under 10 and we talked about it within our little circles until we grew to 20 families whose enthusiasm has fueled the pace until this day today we are just one huge family that proudly present what is truly a feat a feat driven by perseverance resilience and passion attributes that hold us when we are lost that guide us when we seek our destiny or as we chart our paths to it these are also the pillars that make second chance an initiative in pursuit of creative continuity for indian classical artists well past their prime or considered so at second chance we question stereotypes we break rules and we realize dreams because our dreams deserve a second chance we at second chance are immensely proud to present our first live show where the dreams of yesterday meet the hopes for tomorrow yes it is nurture ring to have all these little talents on stage but it is equally important to remember what brings us alive stepping in from various walks of life we came together and brought our strengths we conquered our limitations both physical and of the mind we painted on a canvas with colors we made up we fell we stood again and for all that our humble gratitude to each of the families involved today is yours to keep we thank the staff of empty space we thank the professional and the technical personnel that have chosen to believe in this dream and run along we thank all the contributors who have allowed us to expand and we thank you the rasikas for your encouragement with your presence here to us this is our humble offering through truth through purity and through our own faith to krishna we offer shri krishnar paramastu
playing krishna dear your sweet playing makes my hard work a joy no milk milk this is not milk darling cows make milk i am churning butter milk milk oh so you want some milk <laughs> my little jewel is hungry here have all the milk your tummy can hold. <gasps> oh dear! Wait here, my darling. I'll be right back. I know you are hiding, but you have nothing to fear. I will not punish you. Oh, Krishna, I know that's you. Come here, my darling. If you are fearful of your mother, who loves you more than anyone else in this world, what will become of you? I sense danger, and you are a danger to yourself. I know how to keep you out of danger. You will stay right here till I get my chores done. Mama, no time. I give up. I get the odd feeling that your desire to be free is preventing me from tying you. Mama, you tie. What? How is it that the same rope that was too short is now long enough to tie you up? Hmm. Now you should be safe. You will stay right here.
My lord, master of all mystic powers, thank you for releasing us from our curse. Krishna. <laughs> lord Krishna, of course. I am Malakovra, and this is my brother Manogriva. We are the sons of Kubera. We were trapped in these trees eons ago due to a curse by the great sage Narada. He placed a curse on us when we got too proud of our material wealth. He said that we will meet the Supreme Lord face to face and only then be free from our bondage. And so it has come to pass, we shall be your devotees forever. What on earth has happened here? Look, Dada! Trees! Boom! <laughs> Krishna brought down those trees. Every time something unusual happens, he's always there. There's something unusual about your boy. Hmm. Now that you mention it, you're right. He is not unusual. He is extraordinary. He is our beautiful jewel of Vrindavan. And he stays right here with us. Adults get away with telling children what to do? Or is it their will that always rules? We will never know and we do not need to know. What is there to know? As long as there is a balance, how does it matter who listens to whom? Can anybody be tied up by mere ropes? The mind flies, even if it means that it will lead to bringing down trees 
or moving mountains. Let us watch what happens then. Krishna is persistent. Mother Yashoda is protective. Who wins over whom? Over. 
What comes to mind when we think of Krishna? The blue-hued boy, his curly locks, his flute, his peacock feather, the cows, the gopis, butter? Have you noticed our dear little cowherd is often surrounded by calves and cows who love him dearly, just as dearly, and sway in the tunes of his magical flute? And have you noticed the cow that always accompanies Krishna? She is Munyagodi, the gentlest mother, the noble calf, orphan her calf. This is the story of Krishna's beloved cow, Punyagodi. and the Lord is always with him. He never fails to find us the sweetest grass. Yes, Ganga. He loves us dearly and dots on our calves. But today's grass is extraordinarily sweet. Everything in Vrindavan is sweeter when Krishna plays his beautiful music. over you is me. Wait, I beg you, don't eat me, please. I have gone hungry for three days and I shall eat you now. Listen to me, I gave birth to my dear calf Dara just yesterday and I need to feed her. I ask you this favor, not for me, but for my poor, hungry calf, who must be wondering where her mother is. Please, let me feed her one last time, and I promise, I will return to you. Why should I let you free and believe you'll return? This is Vrindavan, and Krishna is my master. Truth and honesty are my parents. And deceit has never been in my lineage. I swear I shall return to you tomorrow and you can make a meal out of me. Are you serious? More so than ever. Well, well then, feed her, say goodbye and return tomorrow morning. If you do not, I shall eat you and your calf. I'm so glad to see you when you didn't return with the others, I thought. It's a relief to see you safe. I thought for sure that tiger had caught you. Ma! I was so worried about you, Ma. I prayed so hard you would come home, and now you have. Dara, let me look at you, my child. I need to fill my heart with enough love to last a lifetime. But you have a lifetime to do that, Ma. What's wrong, Punyakati? The tiger 
did catch me. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, darling Zara. Then there is nothing to worry about. You are safe now. Now, but not tomorrow. What do you mean? I promised the tiger that in exchange for letting me see and feed Dara one last time, I would return to his cave so that... <sighs> Must you really go? Why should you die, Ma? What makes you think you should make me an orphan? Why don't you remain a little longer? You will never be found by the tiger. Whose milk shall I drink, Ma? Who will be as loving and compassionate as you? Who will I cuddle to get to sleep? be enough to keep you growing strong and healthy my darling now i must go no ma i won't let you go i can't leave you ma i gave my word to the tiger thara i must keep it up I know where you are going. It is noble, but not necessary. You are young, and Dara needs you. I'm just an old cowherd with not long left for this world. You promised the tiger a meal. Let me be that meal. No, master. I promised, and it shall be me. My dear sisters, please take care of this calf as if she were your own. cow my darling and always walk the path of righteousness no matter how hard my child ma come back please come back she left to keep a promise she will come back to keep her promise
How could I let myself be fooled by that cow? But I didn't lie when I said I leave her and her calf. That won't be necessary. I have returned, as promised. Stop! Eat me instead! Cow is just a meal, but if you devour me, I won't be able to hurt you again. Hmm. The old man has a point. Yes, I shall eat him instead. Mom! Dara, no! Get away! Ah, tender calf. Be wise, tiger. Take me. Hmm. Choices, choices, choices. I know. I'll eat you all. Now, where should I start? Take me and let my mother go. No, she barely has any meat on her bones. Eat me and let her go free. Please, eating a man will fill your heart with pride as well as your stomach with food. the wrong choice. Why shouldn't I eat this cow? She promised me her life if I let her see her calf again. She, she was, was truthful, truthful, was she, she not? not? Isn't, Isn't that, that a virtue, virtue worth rewarding? Her calf, then? But Dara has acted selflessly by offering herself instead of her mother. Surely that is worth your respect. Ah. I'll eat the old cowherd. I thought tigers were noble creatures. How can you eat an old man who doesn't even have enough muscles to put up a fight? Forgive me, Krishna, for acting like a demon rather than a noble tiger. If I consume this beautiful soul, will I ever be able to live with myself? <clears throat> How many times have we stopped to justify our actions and listen to our inner conscience? Krishna may just be that inner conscience that seeds a thought. It is up to us to act. Arbuta translates as cancer in the language of Kannada. Cancer of the mind where the beckonings of righteousness are silenced by the malignancy of our free will and excuse of predestined nature. Arbuta, a beast, recognized Bunyakoti's moral high ground, a proof of his mental and emotional prose being just as strong as his might and ferocity. Bunyakoti's veracity, Dara's selflessness and the hunter's offering of himself is their practice of Sri Krishna Arpanamastu, their offering through their faith. Would we be consumed by the malignancy of our existence or would we rise beyond the obvious? Bunyakoti. Your honesty and truthfulness to win over my physical strength and prowess. It is better that I die of hunger than eat someone as noble as you. Please leave and take your calf with you. Let me perish for the sins of my thoughts. Your act has made you the noblest of the ferocious creatures. You have been blessed with the power to see goodness, honour and honesty and act in a way that commands respect. Henceforth, you will be regarded as the noblest of ferocious creatures. Oh Krishna, how can I thank you for saving my dear Dara? By raising her to be a big, beautiful cow like you. 
and you will be remembered as a cherished cow, as a symbol of all that is pure, truthful, and honest. We'll take a 15 minutes break. We'll come back after the interval. So if you can see Mr. Manohar here, I think some of you have already registered. So you can see him and collect your 50 pound voucher from him. Or I think it, you can register the voucher and extend the deadline as well. Um, thank you a lot, Manohar, and thank you, Finso. And the other uh, company, Gokulam, who couldn't be here today, they are a grocery shop selling um, very specific South Indian groceries in Beswick, uh, in Manchester. They also are uh, launching a North Karnataka food line called Jawari Foods. So very soon we should have them on our next program. And Dhruvi's, I'm sure most of you tasted the food out there in the foyer. Uh, they have supported all our events and they're here today to feed us and uh, you know, keep us all well fed and drunk. And the next program that uh, I wanted to bring to your notice is a classical music program on the 24th of Feb uh, March at Flixton Girls School, Ermston. It's a music uh, fusion, a classical fusion uh, music program by a troupe called Layataranga, who are traveling from India to perform across the UK. And our show is on the 24th of March, 2024 at 6 p.m. at Flixton Girls School. There's a QR code outside on the, in the foyer. If you scan, you would get all the details onto your mobile phones. And I'm out here if you need any information about the show on 24th. Thank you very much. Namaste. I'll just take uh, three to four minutes uh, to speak on behalf of all the parents whose children have done and doing an amazing job of representing the stories of Sri Krishna on the stage today. It is heartwarming for us to see how Sri Krishna Arpanamastu, a concept that originated during mealtime discussions in Anu and Pradeep's dining room with their little children Pranav and Adya grew into such a huge community project involving over 20 families. We came together as a community in this project with the shared vision of showcasing the childhood escapades of Krishna, thereby strengthening and enriching our children's knowledge of their roots. Their roots in India, that is Bharat and in Sanatana Dharma that believes in the philosophy of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, loosely translated as the entire world is one family. Through this project, we have grown stronger as a community and our children have formed some beautiful friendships and have strengthened the old ones. More importantly, they have played, laughed and have had fun at the same time taking home some very vital life lessons from the stories of Sri Krishna. As a group, in the last 10 weeks, some of us have faced and overcome various challenges, both of the physical and emotional kind. And it is not an exaggeration when I say that bringing our children to practice and improving their performance has kept us going for these last 10 weeks. It has been an absolute privilege being a part of this unique project. On behalf of all the children and parents, I would like to express our sincere thanks to Anuradha and Pradeep, who have been the driving force behind this endeavor. I don't think it is a coincidence that our show has happened two days after Shivaratri and Women's Day celebrating Shiva and Shakti. <laughs> Lalita Sahasranama, an ancient Sanskrit hymn, describes Shakti as Ichha Shakti, Dnyana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Swarupini. 
Similarly, Anu has been the creative and powerfully flexible energy or Shakti behind this project. And Pradeep has been the stable, steadfast, peaceful, yet strong force supporting this initiative just like Shiva. How they managed to dedicate so many hours in the day to this project, balancing their busy careers and two little children at home, functioning on as little as two to three hours of sleep is beyond our comprehension. Truly, words fall short to express a heartfelt gratitude to you both. All I can say is a humble thank you on behalf of all the parents. You all heard our children sing the song Kannan, Kannan, Kannan. Kannan in Malayalam language means Krishna. Again, I don't think it is a mere coincidence that this song was chosen for today's show amongst probably the millions of songs that have been composed on Krishna in various languages. This song is a fitting tribute to yet another driving force behind this project, our dear friend Mukesh Kannan. A gifted musician, Mukesh can bring any song in any genre to life by stroking his magical fingers on his keyboard. They say that music transcends the boundaries of race, religion and language. And Mukesh is a living example of this. He is equally at ease playing songs based in Carnatic and Hindustani ragas or those based in Western music. He is a part of several community associations, professional music groups, temple and church choirs where he offers his selfless service of music. A busy NHS professional working in Plymouth in the south of England, Mukesh has travelled several times to Manchester to direct and compose the music for this show. Mukesh, you are an absolute asset to our community and our children have so much to learn from your selfless dedication to music and the community cause. Please accept a heartfelt gratitude for everything you have done. I sincerely hope that we can all come together again soon and come up with another unique and exciting project like this. Shri Krishna Arpanamastu. Kasturi Tilakam Lalat Palake Vakshasthali Kaustubham Naisa
traveling back to the dusting trails of history, we read about the times when the earth was overburdened by the rule of ruthless rulers who were driven by insatiable greed for power and wealth. Whoever stood in their way fell under their sword and chaos and injustice prevailed. Overwhelmed by torment and pain, Mother Earth sought the help of Lord Brahma, the creator of material universes, on the order of the Supreme Lord. Along with the other demigods, Brahma approached the Supreme Lord and offered prayers requesting him to manifest himself and protect Mother Earth. Lord Vishnu promised to appear upon the Earth to protect the good and destroy the evil and took the avatar of Krishna and came to be in the beautiful village of Vrindavan, a set of Nanda and Yashoda. When trouble strikes, we pray. So did Brahma. And what do we do when the trouble is vanquished? Though there is a display sense of us having a role to play. We claim and create a space where we can glorify ourselves, forgetting there is a far superior power and we are but pawns in our own destiny. So what happens when a devotee gets so drunk on his own powers that he forgets the very purpose of his prayers? Through the story of the enchanted picnic, we learn lessons of humility and surrender. Are you off with your friends again? Be careful, my darling. I will be waiting all day to see you. Oh, Krishna, I have got something for you, my little angel. You didn't pack that one in my pack, dear mother. Not for you, Madhu. These special rasogulas are only for Krishna. I have already given you your lunch. Oh, my beautiful bumblebee, here are my best Sundays, just the way you like it, fluffy and soft, they just melt in your mouth. Krishna, my lovely blue lotus, look what I've got for you. Let's go, Krishna, the cows are getting impatient. So are we. That's enough pampering in one day, Krishna. Now run along and see that you share your gifts with your friends. I will, Mother. You are so kind to me. Thank you for all the lovely goodies. Yashoda, your Krishna is so special. Look how he plays his flute and gets all our boys to dance like butterflies. Every morning I see him and I can't get his lotus eyes and his sweet smile out of my mind the whole day. Vidhi is right. Sometimes we forget our own boys. You are so fortunate, Yashoda. I really wish Krishna was my own little boy. It's all in our eyes. Yes, I see magic when I see my Krishna. It is in your little boys too. You just have to see it. Krishna must certainly be the supreme person. Banu, I am in charge of conducting the material creation and I know my master. Surely the supreme Lord Vishnu finds no need to give up his abode in Vaikuntha and choose to live amongst the simple villagers of Vrindavan. Pardon me, my lord. Is there anyone else who can defy something this powerful? This very morning, he killed the vicious demon Agathia. Banu, there is nothing about the Supreme Lord that I do not know. 
I make it a point to be informed of his transcendental activities. Hence, I believe this a feat of a very powerful magician. Nevertheless, I must make sure who the little magician is myself. We should, my lord. I am so happy to be with you all in this beautiful forest off in Darwin. Oh my, I just want a good nap under this mango tree. That's a very good idea, Fridama. Are you boys going to be useless again today? Or are you going to help out for a change? We need apples to put in our pickles. Would you care to get any? Or will it be more trouble if they try to help? Let it be. And it's not like we can't get it ourselves. It's just that they are in our way. Let's go, we have work to do. You boys just get away being useless. I wonder how. You're just jealous watching us rest. Come on, girls. So this is where the blue boy hides. What kind of magic can he possibly do? The kind that can kill a python, my lord. But here we have a very clever wizard to deal with. Banu, the lord has given me charge of the universe. Can I not deal with a mere boy? Come close. I cannot find the cows anywhere. True, I last saw them grazing by the river. You all stay here, I will go find the cows. up to this mischief. Ah, oh, so it's you, Brahma, who wishes to play with me. I have appeared on this earth on your court, and now you are puzzled. Krishna, the cowherd, had lost his cows. He had even lost his friends. They were nowhere to be seen, and though Krishna had figured out Brahma's plan, he did not confront Brahma over a duel or debate to get his friends back. That realization had to be of Brahma's himself. But the night had set in. The mothers of Rindavan were worrying. How would he restore the boys with their mothers? Have you seen my son yet? It makes me anxious. Krishna and the boys have not returned. It's well past sunset. They should have returned hours ago. Where could they be? I shall not allow this trick of Brahma 
to break the hearts of these mothers. Dear mothers of in Darwin have always wished to have me as their son. I shall fulfill their pure desire. And so, the Supreme Lord himself decided to manifest himself as every boy and every calf in Rindarvin. He expanded himself into each one of them as a physical representation of being omnipresent, being everywhere and within each one of us. Each individual is different, unique, yet the presence of Godhead within each one of us makes us worthy of the love and respect that Krishna himself commands. Look! There he is, so bright and beautiful is my mother. My son looks just as radiant as Krishna. So does my darling Subala. Oh, you sure do. How bright all the boys look. Yes, so they seem. Krishna continued to manifest himself by expanding himself into all of those taken so not to cause trouble in the peaceful village of Rindavan. The days pass into seasons and the cowherd boys remained hidden in Brahma's dreamland. The villagers could not see the cause of their constant bliss. The truth was that every home had Krishna and every mother saw Krishna in her child. Each mother fed her own Krishna simply embodied in the form of their own son. A year goes by. However, Brahma is no ordinary soul. Did he really play this trick to teach a little boy a lesson? No. Brahma was a chosen messenger, a tool. He embodies and reflects the follies of human behavior, despite being the highest form of manifestation spiritually. Believing he was invincible made him arrogant. All these are but representations of our own traits as humans. Oh, Lord, what have I got myself into? Let me go to Vrindavan and find out what Krishna is up to, having lost the boys and calves. How can this be? The cowherd boys are asleep in the clouds. How can they all be here, playing with Krishna? What is this? You are Brahma. Who are all these Brahmas? Oh Lord, what is going on? Oh my Lord, my Lord, what have I done? Forgive me, my dear Lord. Chaitanya Mukha Brahma, you are my devotee and you have all the power in you. Yet you failed to understand the absolute truth. Today I shall show you the entire truth. You are just one of the many bigger universes. Things are much bigger and more complex. My Lord, I am an insignificant glowworm before your brilliance. But how is it that your simple friends of Rindavan just adore you as their darling boy? Their love is simple, pure and intense. I cannot be understood only by that knowledge or meditation. I can be understood by simple love and devotion. May I always remember and cherish you in this beautiful boyish form, playing with friends and calves of Vrindavan. Brahma surrendered to a mere boy. Little minds need to be heard too. Their voices cannot be silenced, and to bow to them is not a sign of weakness, but reaffirms one's greatness of heart. As for the mothers who wish Krishna were their own son, well now, they had come to finally see Krishna in their own sons. Gunnam, 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 as a gunnam.
household has footprints of their own child during Janmashtami. We celebrate Krishna's birth. That is the omnipresence of Krishna. We may not need to buy into him as the supreme personality of Godhead, but there is no denying that every childhood at some point is relatable to Krishna's own escapades and mysteries as a child. No wonder, sometimes we are stunned into silence by some acts of our own children. The questions they ask when we have no answers their reasoning and logic that surpasses our so-called intelligence. Why look for Krishna in idols and mantras when you have one right in front of your very own eyes?
change. But here came to live Kalinga, the five-headed monstrous snake with his wives. Ever since Kalinga decided to make the Yamuna his home, the surroundings were left bereft of life. Such was the strength in his venom that the water was green and odorous, smelling of stark death itself. Even the mighty Garuda, the king of birds, could only prevent Kalinga's wicked deeds, but could never quite conquer him. He warned. Wicked Kalia, I banish you from these waters. The poison that bubbles thick in your mind and your fangs are a fatal threat to the peace and joy of these beautiful hands. Leave instantly and never return. But Kalinga never left. Leave, he says. I know where I should leave to. There is one place Garda will never enter. Vrindavan! That's where I will go.
But you did. How could this flower bulb land over here? Hey, stop throwing things at me. Let me rest. There, you hit me again. No, you did. Who woke me up again? Oh, these guys will never stop. Hey! Oh, so it was you two. Phew, you finally found us. Look, the girls are coming. No more, no more, stop. I order whoever it is to stop right now. Come, let's hide. Let's hide behind this bus. Yes, they can't get us then. You are wrong. I cannot miss Dada because I was wrong in my previous life. You liar. You could not have been the mighty Lord Rama. Aw, she called you a liar, Krishna. Rama was a brave warrior. And the brave Krishna can only throw flowers from behind girls. He can build a bridge across the Yamuna to prove it. And who's going to use it? Your cows and monkeys? It is useless. No one goes to the Yamuna anyway. Why? Because of Kalinga, the five-headed serpent. I know they're making it up. They don't know and they won't believe us. Let's go. The monsoon sets in by the end of this week. See that the best seeds are distributed to all farmers to ensure a bountiful harvest. Nanda Maharaj! Nanda Maharaj! Help! Calm down, Sukanta. What's the matter? Oh, Nanda Maharaj, it was terrible. A great serpent arose from the Yamuna. It had many heads. Poison spewed out of each one of them. My cows! The poison! You speak of a terrible danger, Sukanta. Minister, gather all the able-bodied men immediately. I will lead them to the Yamuna. See that all the women and children are safe in their houses. And send word to all cow herds to return to the village with their herds at once. Oh no. What's the matter, Yashoda? Rata said she saw Krishna and the boys by the Yamuna today. We must hurry! It is the one who gets it. Oh no! But it's over that hillock. I can't. Some running up the hill will do you good. I know. 
The one who drops it is the one who gets it. I'll be back soon. Wait, Wait Krishna! Oh no! Krishna's gone into the Yamuna. The water looks terribly green. I don't feel very well anymore. <sighs> let us get you out of here and let us get some help from the village. forgiveness Krishna my venom was poisoning my mind you have helped me see I was blinded by my own hate and anger very well Kalia. I will forgive you provided you go away to the ocean and never return to Vrindavan again but Krishna, without my venom, I am defenseless. How will I protect my kingdom? The mighty Garuda will not spare me now. Garuda will never harm you when he sees my footprints on your head. Krishna, Bandi, Jagar, Guru. Abhyutthanam adharmasya Tadatmanam srijamyaham Paritranaya sadhuna Vinashaya chadushkrita Dharma sansthapna thaya Sambhava Krishna, you are back. You are so mysterious, my child. 
but I have no need to understand you. To me, you are simply my dearest darling. So today, we saw a little toddler have his way. We saw a cow that would not steer away from the path that is righteous. We saw arrogance bow down before innocence. And we saw poison melt away. These are attributes of the humankind. Krishna is a mere name, a mere thought, an idea, our conscience, whatever you say it. He is there, outside us, around us, and within us. To that Krishna, we offer Sri Krishna Pranamastu. We welcome you, we bow to thee. Swagatam Krishna, Sharanagatam Krishna.
Krishna. Hello all. Um, I think it was a treat to watch all of the kids perform and all of the dancers. So I think we're going to conclude with a final performance. And uh, we're going to uh, reward the kids with trophies. Uh, that is uh, very with kindness from Anand ji and uh, Narini ji. So while we give the kids, I appreciate if you can support them with your loud claps, as loud as is possible. Thank you.
Please continue with the applause as, as we uh, honor the children who have worked very, very hard. Uh, children, please collect your awards as you walk out. Trophies more than awards, but it's uh, priceless. Continue with your applause, please.